Man, I really get a warm, fuzzy feeling when you show up. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Saturday, July 16th. Now, we're going to take a look at one stock today, one hot stock. This is Vapor, V-A-P-R, also known as Esight Motors, since their change of control last March. Now, this is an EV manufacturing company. They're on the OTC, and they are a startup. But you're going to want to look at this company because they are uniquely different than any other manufacturing company out there that makes electric cars. They specialize in doing something that nobody else does. And that is what makes this stock. No big surprise to most of you that we are doing our research on VAPR over here at the OTCMarkets.com website. Now, folks, this is my go-to site whenever I do research on any OTC stock. And it really should be yours too. This will save you a lot of time and it'll save you a lot of frustration. Seriously, this is the only site I know of that FINRA and the SEC update every single day for every single OTC stock. That means it's never outdated. You don't need to go searching over at Google and sorting through decades of old information. All they publicize here is current information. Make doing your research easy. Use OTC markets first. If you can't find what you're looking for, then go out into the big, big world. So we are looking at ticker VAPR, Vapor Brands International. She is buzzing all over the internet right now because of her reverse merger in March. She was doing one kind of business and now she's doing something else, EV. And she's doing a specialty type of business and she's getting a lot of attention for it. And to show you how much attention she is getting, I've jumped on over here to the current market page, which shows us the price, percentage change, share volume, and trades, folks. Trades. And that's why you don't see me in the picture right now, because my big head was covering all these numbers down here. I'll come back in just a minute. But I want you to see here, this is every single stock on the entire OTC market. This is the biggest gainer. And if I just keep scrolling, I'll go to the very, very bottom. It just keeps going. But you see up here, at 257% gains, Vapor did over 2,000 trades today, folks. Now, how many people do you think it takes to do 2,000 trades? Well, it's more than 100. It's more than 500. It's probably more than 1,000. So there is at least 1,000 people around Vapor, and it could be 2,000. Now, she did 44 million shares. Other companies did a lot more shares, but they were a lot cheaper. 0002, 0004. You know you can buy a million shares at $200 at 0002. A million shares up here is going to be a little more expensive. But it really isn't about the shares. It is about the trades. This is what's very important to me. So she was getting a lot of attention today. And you can see nobody else was even coming close. We've got a few in there that have a couple hundred, a few hundred, but nobody else has a thousand. And we're down to 33% now. And this is every stock on the OTC market. So let's take a look at how she finished on Friday. She was just under six and a half cents with a whopping 257, almost 258% gains without any catalyst of her own. There was no filings on Friday. There was no news. All we have is news on the 12th, a few days ago, and of course, we have the change of control in March with the reverse merger, but that's it. She's on the pink tier, she's current, she's got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. Now, I'm always telling you, look for these green ticks on any OTC stock. They're good to have there, but on a pink, they're great. Look, this is verified information. It's validated by the OTC. Not exactly sure what it is, but it is all verified. And with pinks, you don't get a lot of verified information. So this is a bonus. Looks really good. Now, she is a shell company. This means they're not making any money. They're not in business right now. Now, they were, right up until March, they were selling CBD oil and beard oil. You heard me right, CBD oil and beard oil, and they weren't doing very well with it. So they made some acquisitions in March, which you're going to see in the news, and then changed their direction completely to the EV market. Now, before we jump into the share structure and the volume, I wanted to show you where the company came from, how long they've been around, and what's been happening to their management in the last eight months. And that really has had an effect on the company. 
Now I'm getting all this information from their most current financial report. This came out in March of this year. They tell us that they had incorporated in 1986 in Delaware under the name Quadrax Corporation. Then in 2004, they changed their name to TTCM China, having a clue why. They then redomiciled from Delaware to Nevada. And in 2012, they established a new subsidiary called Vapor Brands International. And not too long after that, they actually merged the whole company into the new subsidiary and renamed the company Vapor Brands International. Now, they went on to tell us that though the company had recognized some nominal amount of income since inception, the company continued to devote substantially all of its efforts on just establishing the business. We're not talking about building it up. We're talking about setting it up. So they weren't doing too well. Now, these last eight months, they've had a lot of management changes. Not by choice, actually. In December, their CEO passed away, Eleanor Hodge. So they got a director to step in for the CEO position, Florence Montgomery. And she held that position for a few months up until February, where they then appointed Barry Henthorne as the new CEO and chairman of the board. But it was that appointment of, of Mr. Henthorne that was considered a change of control of the business. And then everything changed. What they were doing, they stopped. The next two sentences definitely tell us that. It was in March that Vapor Brand ceased all CBD-derived oil and beard oil development. We were a distributor of specialty CBD-derived oil and beard oil products. During March of 2022, the company ceased all CBD-derived oil and beard oil development. No doubt about it there, folks. They are done with CBD. And they just made a deal with uh, Oasis Spectrum about a year and a half ago. So all of that is to the side. They are all about EVs now. So let's go take a look at that volume. Now, surprisingly, there was a huge volume increase for Vapor on Friday without any catalyst. Yeah, she did have news on the 12th and she had news in March but nothing on Friday. And she jumped from an average of 2 million shares a day for the last 30 days to over 44 million shares on Friday without a direct catalyst. That is more than 20 times her regular volume. Let's take a look at the float. All right, we have in the outstanding shares, 337 million. I always go to the unrestricted shares to get the float. These are the shares they put on the market, the float. We don't have anything listed here, so I did use Google, went to a few sites to validate the same number kept coming up, and it is roughly 70 million shares. Really not a bad share count. We're not going to call it super duper low, but 70 million is not bad at all. Financials, well, they're a shell company, so we're not going to see anything but zeros over here. We're not making any money yet. Their disclosures, well, because they're pink current, we know all of their financial filings are going to be on time. And SEC filings, well, we got nothing new here since 2006. Oh my God, what a long time for no filings. It is the news that tells us the story of what's going on. So let's go take a look at that right now. Now we got a ton of news over here for Vapor. We're not going to look at it all, thank goodness. But I am going to focus in on a few of the PRs. I want you to see where the company's been, where the company's going. But I also want to introduce you to the driving force behind this new company, Gene Langmesser. Gene Langmesser is a car enthusiast, to put it lightly. He has a lot of experience and a lot of credentials. And he is going to be the driving force behind this new business. So the news I've got here, just on this page, goes all the way back to 2014. You can see it was here in March of 2020. They made that acquisition of Oasis Spectrum. Then all the way up here in May of last year, you see they are still working with Oasis Spectrum and their CBD oils and beard oils. Then you have a quiet period. There is nothing between May of last year and March of this year. And when they do finally put out news, they tell us that the OTC markets approves Vapor's eSight Motors change of control application following recent acquisitions. What are those recent acquisitions? Well, to get that information, all you really got to do is jump back into their most recent financial report and you're going to find it because everything is in these financial reports. And that one paragraph right there says it all for us. They made three acquisitions just last March for three different companies. All three of them were stock transactions. They did not have to spend any money to get these companies. 
So they tell us that on March 4th, 2022, the company purchased eSight Motors for 57 million restricted shares. Each share was at a value of just over a half a penny, 0055. So the total value of this purchase was $313,000. To me, that seems like a pretty low price for a business. The second company they got was also on March 4th. This was Auto Rescue Repair and Restoration. They're better known as acclaimed auto repair. And for this company, they put out 21 million shares at the same value, just over a half a penny. So this cost them $115,000. Imagine that, buying an entire business for just over $100,000. The third company they got a hold of, they already owned 33% of. So now they're acquiring the rest of it. This is N2A Motors, and this is Gene Langmesser's business. This is where he came from. They gave 20 million shares to get this company. These shares were valued a little bit more at 0089, just under a penny. So they paid $178,000 for this company. So they got three companies all in March, all for stock at really great prices. And when you add it all up, they put out 98 million shares at a value of $611,000. And when you average all the shares out, it comes out to 0062 per share. And when you look at the current price right now, we are at 064. We are more than 1,000% up from that time. And I think it is going to just continue growing. Let's jump back to that news. Now, with news as radical as that, you got to expect that the shareholders are going to have a lot of questions. They want to know what's the deal, what's up. So the next few PRs over that month are about an interview that they're going to have online and they want their shareholders to post questions in advance so that the new CEO, Gene, can answer them. Well, the very last PR with regard to that, they give us a lot of information about the CEO, and I want you to see this. This PR came out April 11th, and basically it was just to inform everybody that the interview with the COO was complete. And if you'd like to see it, all you got to do is run over to eSightMotors.com where they've got it posted and you can view it too. Now, this is the man right there. This is Gene Lang Messer. He is the king of the road. Honestly, folks, I want you to get to know this man because the bottom line is a company is only as successful as its management. And this man has got more than just credentials. He's got passion. This is Gene Langmesser. He has extensive years of domestic and international professional experience in the sales, business development, executive business operations, and the product design engineering industry. He worked his way up through all the key job classifications and has performed these tasks from art to part. In his career, Gene set up offices, design, engineering, rapid prototyping, mock-up, and fabrication facilities. He has conducted international businesses in Germany, Italy, England, France, Poland, and Mexico. The man gets around, doesn't he? In 2016, Gene and N2A were tasked to design and build the first ever hydrogen hybrid semi-truck by Nikola Motors. They delivered the entire carbon fiber body all the lighting, the glass, mirrors, grills, emblems, the full interior, the dash, the gauges, beds, seats, and many other aspects. N2A was also contracted by Nikola to build much of the first ever all-electric UTV72 EV buggy, which can hit 0 to 60 in just 3 seconds. That sounds a little scary to me, a buggy that moves that fast. In addition, to leading design and product development teams and prototyping for automobile manufacturers such as Porsche, Mercedes, Lexus, Ford, Hyundai, and others. He has also created or built many movie cars or props, most notably the futuristic Lexus 2054 driven in the minority report by Tom Cruise. The Taxis in Taxi with Queen Latifah, the fighter ships in Battlestar Galactica, the Batmobile in Batman and Robin, and even the bodies in Terminator 3. So this guy has done a lot of work and people are willing to pay for his quality work. So I like the man, I think you should like the man too. 
The next piece of news came out five days later and it's really big news. The company informs us that they got all of their financial filings caught up and current. They are now back on the open market with a clean bill of health from the OTC markets. They're pink current again. Now, I honestly don't know how long they were down and dirty. All I know is that they're looking good now. Now, speaking of looking good, the next news press tells us about an article about this company online. Actually, the article is about a lot of EV companies. It was called The Good, The Terrible, and The Amazing. They had one good company they talked about, Tesla. They had lots of terrible companies they talked about. Can't remember the names of any of them, actually. And they had one amazing company. Want to guess which one it was? That's right. It was Eastsight Motors. They are catching a lot of attention and they are catching a lot of focus right now. Now, I have not explained to you why they're catching all that attention because they are uniquely different. And I haven't forgotten about it. I'm going to get to it in just two more pieces of news. Hang on. So here in July, we're told that the CEO is taking off 10 million shares off of the outstanding share count. He's worried about dilution. I don't see it, but then I'm not on the inside seeing all the details. The outstanding share count right now is at about 337 million. Now it's going to be 227 million. So what is the difference in this company and all the other companies? Well, I can tell you by looking at this piece of news right here. Vapor Eastsight Motors applies for World Manufacturer Identifier to allow global sales of new electric passenger vehicles. Now, Eastsight Motors has big dreams. They want to sell their brand new cars made with brand new parts to other countries of the world. Now, you're saying, why did you say it that way? Why wouldn't they have brand new parts and brand new cars? Everybody does. Yeah, I know. But as soon as I tell you what makes this company uniquely different than all the other EV companies, I don't want you jumping to conclusions. So I'm just putting that out there right now for the moment. So the company does want to sell their new cars around the world. And to do that, you've got to get a WMI, a world's manufacturer identifier. It's an extra code that's added to the VIN number of the car. The VIN is the vehicle identification number that uniquely describes the vehicle. You've probably seen it before. You can go out to your car right now and most likely in the bottom corner of the windshield, you'll see a metal plate and on that plate are a bunch of numbers. Well, each one of those numbers represents a piece of information. It will tell you where the car was manufactured, year of production, place of production, and the characteristics of the car. And once they get their WMI, they only have one step left to get their VINs on their brand new cars and start selling them around the world. Now, what makes this company so different than all the other companies is that they're not going to be making any cars less than 25 years old. I've really got you confused now, don't I? What this company is doing is making duplicates. They're replicating vintage cars as electric vehicles today. They might go out and get a 1965 Mustang as the car that they're going to make. They're not going to go to the junkyard and get the body, the headlights, the steering wheel, and then put it into a brand new car. No, they're going to make every single piece from scratch brand new so it looks vintage, but it isn't. It's brand new. And though it looks old and retro and flourish on the outside, on the inside, it's going to be modern. I mean, you will have the decor, but you're going to have your GPS, you're going to have your stereo, you're going to have all the nice amenities we have. Now, what's really great about this is that it's not just duplicating what's already been done. Gene likes to blend cars together. Check out this car. This is called the 789. It is an amalgam of three iconic Chevrolet cars, and they're all built on a Chevrolet Corvette chassis. The nose of the car is a 57 Bel Air. The center of the car is a 1958 Impala, and the back end of the car is a 1959 Impala. And as you can see, there are lots of these out there. He didn't just make one. These are in Australia. They are in America. Now, I don't know how many there are, but they aren't mass produced. And that's really the difference with this company. They are never going to mass produce their cars. This is going to be light production. As a matter of fact, it is going to give them some advantages. Right down here, they tell us that unlike competitors, Tesla, Nikola, Polestar, Lucid, VW, Ford, Jaguar, and others, 
eSight is not required to meet any of the safety or other costly certifications of traditional auto manufacturers, making the ease and timeline of offering new vehicles to market significantly more favorable. Whereas the initial timeline to be able to deliver a production vehicle to market generally exceeds three years from the table to the floor and often longer and at a very high cost. eSight expects to be delivering its first production vehicles for 2023 model year. That is less than 12 months from inception to the showroom. I mean, it is halfway through 2022 right now. This is possible because eSight's vehicles qualify under the Low Volume Vehicle Manufacturers Act of 2015. In 2015, they passed a law that if you're not making at least 5,000 cars a year, you don't have to meet safety qualifications. Now, I don't want you to jump to any other conclusions either. He tells us in the recent interview that he has a lot of experience with safety. He actually created the crash test dummy. That's what he says. So he doesn't want to make a car that's dangerous. He's going to put all the knowledge he has about safety into these cars. However, he doesn't have to go through all of the process of proving it to anybody else, nor does he have to pay for any of that. So the cars are going to get the market faster and cheaper. And now we're down to the last piece of news, the one I've been referring to off and on through this show that came out on the 12th. eSight Motors provides first details of new affordable EV sports car. eSight Motors Group has released details of its new affordable electric sports car that is currently in development. Currently, they're not thinking about it, they're doing it, right? The vehicle is codenamed the eCGT. It is a two-seat sports car that resembles a modern version of a legendary vehicle that was produced in the late 60s and early 70s. The ECGT also features an easily removable hardtop section of the roof that stores in the front boot, since electric, you don't have a motor there, right? And still providing storage in the trunk for at least two sets of golf clubs. The vehicle will be available as both an affordable entry-level fiberglass bodied variant as well as a more performance-oriented S version sporting a carbon fiber body and upgraded power and suspension. Eastside is currently assembling the prototype and expects to release additional details and photos shortly. You know darn well if they had pictures I showed you. Now I did watch the interview that we've spoke of that was just out a few days ago and basically he says they're going to cover all price ranges. They're going to go from the affordable to the ridiculously expensive. They're going to have cars with just 100 horsepower and they're going to have cars that exceed a thousand horsepower. So they're going to try to do everything. Now the one thing I didn't mention here is I'm a little worried I guess you might say, if they can produce more than 5,000 cars, and I did read the law, and that has to include all their subsidiaries, so it's not like you can get 5,000 from each subsidiary by splitting up your company. It's a total count. Well, how much money are you possibly going to make selling 5,000 or less cars a year? It is the maximum that they can do. And they're not working on any new technology or anything like that. Everything that they're building, they're buying from other people. It is being outsourced to them and they're assembling it here in America. So I have got to think that more than less of their cars are going to be exceedingly expensive that they're going to be building these brilliantly, excessively priced cars that look gorgeous. And that's how they're going to make their money. That is just a presumption. I think they'll come out with an affordable EV to start the process. And then I think you're just going to jump. That's just a guess. All right, let's go take a look at that chart and see what it So we're going to be charting VAPR over here at Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got just for signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. You can too. Just sign up, keep your account open. That's all you really got to do. And you got yourself a free trading platform to use anytime you like. So we are looking at VAPR's six month, four hour chart right now. And there is no doubt that Friday's jump was impressive. No, explosive. This thing started off at under a penny and a half and went almost to seven cents. You're looking at over 450% gains without a catalyst. 
Now she did fall back. We ended up with the measly 257% gains. Seriously, folks, that is outstanding. Considering that she hasn't had a catalyst in a few days, where all this volume came from, I really don't know. But that high bubble you see right there, that is a 52 week high bubble. You can see there is nothing even close. Highest we ever got was 4.3 cents and our new high is 6.8 cents. Now, you've got to keep in mind, since there is no activity above us, we're not going to be able to get any support lines or resistant lines to work with. We're going to have to heavily rely on our price bars and our technicals. Going back to that six month, four hour view, please. <laughs> you can see six months ago, she was falling steadily, pushing further and further away from the 200 hit a low bubble. That didn't seem to deter anything. Looks like she just kept on doing that until March 8th. That was that first news press that came out this year about the change of control and it took off and it went from underneath every SMA to on top of every SMA. That was incredible. However, she didn't stay there long. She fell abruptly and quickly, but she didn't fall all the way back down. No, sir. She split the difference, landed right on the 50 day SMA here and bounced up to the 200 day SMA. Once there, she got some tailwind momentum and grew. And from the beginning of the bounce right here to up here, would you believe that is again another 450% bounce? Is that a coincidence or a habit? Then she tumbled down real fast and landed on the 200. Thank God for that. Took a bounce and has been falling for about two and a half months. We had a nice strong spike here on the news about the 10 million being taken off of the outstanding shares and she started to grow. Not very fast, but each SMA she got above, you can see the price bars are getting thicker and thicker until she got on top of the 200 popcorn and just got real big. We got lots of volume on a day without catalyst compared to the days before and the technicals are very strong. Let's take a look at that 20 day one hour. Well, she wasn't doing hardly anything for many, many days until the news came out on the 12th. Now you can see here, she just pushed herself right up to the 200, would not go over it all day. On the 13th, I don't know what happened. That's a whole day of trading. Not a lot going on there. Then on the 14th, yeah, she got on top of the 200 and just careened across it like it was ice. Didn't do hardly anything at all. And then on Friday, just ignited like the Apollo. She launched and took off lots of volume nothing beforehand and she is still climbing it looks like after market hours she is pushing up our technicals are still strong let's take a look at that five day five minute what a beautiful chart we got a low bubble five days ago of one penny we got a high bubble on friday of 6.8 cents in the last five days you could have made 680 percent gains on this stock unbelievable now what stands out biggest to me about this is that friday's gain the price was floating on top of this 10-day sma had no weight on its shoulders understand the 10-day sma is as thin as a cracker it is so thin it's so easy to go through your uh 20-day sma you might want to think of that as a uh piece of plywood and then your 50 day is a two by four you know so this could have come through this very very easily and never did all day just kept floating like a feather at the end of the day she did break through and she is now sitting on the 20 day sma and looks pretty secure sitting there right now now when i look at the technicals i see our macd is falling down but our price isn't coming down with it. We've kind of got this spread going like a fish mouth. And normally when you see that, you can normally expect to see more gains. Fish mouth open, things come in. So there is a possibility this could continue to grow. However, the RSI is under 60, not looking too strong. And the CCI is falling. Now, I didn't expect this to run on Friday, so I don't know what it's going to do on Monday or Tuesday. And I'm really not sure about a long hold on this because I still haven't got it figured out in my mind how they're going to make a ton of money selling only 5,000 cars. But 
in the moment. Right now, this could be a very good play. She seems to like to grab 450% gains, either over days or hours. I like that about her. Her price gets really light when she gets excited. She has jumps when there's not even catalyst. So when the next PR comes out, and I'm expecting one pretty soon here, I'm expecting this to get a good solid jump. So that's what I do. I keep my eyes open for that next PR. And right now, price wise, well folks, she is at a high. There is a good chance if a PR doesn't come out that we're gonna get a dip on this. Where would it dip from? Well, gee whiz, about halfway, folks. Maybe right in there, which is its normal high, four cents, 4.3. It could fall all the way down to there without a press release. So I wouldn't be too quick to jump in, but if you see the volume come into this and she starts to climb again, you may want to reconsider getting in now instead of waiting. So I think this is going to be a good hot play. There's a lot of people looking at it, getting a lot of trades, getting a lot of volume on no catalyst. But remember, do your own DD. I did not cover everything. I'm sure there's more out there. Go visit their websites. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.